Um, when it comes down to trying to predict outcomes, it's incredibly it's like hard. Lottery. It's like playing lottery, right? <laughs> you don't um, know. So I don't think it's like playing the lottery. I think what it is, it's, it's very much like there is a spectrum of possible outcomes. Okay. And I think there is a range of individual responses. Some people respond very quickly. Some people take more time. And yes. when we look at the uh, sort of well, distribution I, from the clinical trials, the clinical trials indicate that after around 90 to 100 days, which is around three months, we okay. see meaning, what are called meaningful improvements or clinically meaningful improvements in people's function. And this is things like you're able to do tasks that you had trouble with before. You're able to do them quicker, more efficiently, and you're able to do things, you're able to do more tasks. This is actually really important because these are things that you couldn't do before. Something like folding a towel, picking up a cup, these sorts of things. Um, yeah, and I understand um, you were mentioning that you had um, very little movement. And I think there's a lot of people on the support group that are in the same sort of situation. There's a lot of people who are using the modus hand right now who either have very little movement to, to no movement now, um, or they had that to start with, and they're starting to get that return of function back. So again, but every stroke is, is very different um, in terms of it's interacting with you and your, the way your brain um, is, is wired and structured. Yeah, so like there's going to be some differences. Okay. Um, but I think one of the things I mentioned about, it's not like a lottery. Um, I, I, I can see how that would make sense. But I think the thing to kind of think about is it's a big equation. And yeah. the, the equation, if we kind of go back to maybe our you know, middle school algebra or whatever, we all kind of can draw a line, like the Y equals MX plus B, right? That kind of draws a line. If we think about- I had advanced algebra. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'm, even, in the even advanced, I'm in the advanced, I assumed I was smart. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, even, um, um, even, even advanced algebra, that's even better. So I think if you kind of imagine this, um, the rehab is like that equation, okay? On the one side, we have your outcome, right? And what we can have on the other side is it's not just Y equals MX plus B. It's a bunch of parameters, a bunch of variables that indicate, that kind of dictate your long-term outcome. Now, I say it's not like playing the lottery because the great thing is, is we know a lot of those variables that matter. Things like doing a lot of really intense rehab, making sure you're engaged in it, right? basically be, being very, very, have a lot of high level of maintenance of this, meaning you're not doing a whole lot of rehab in one day and then not doing a lot for the week after, right? That sort of consistency. So a lot of these parameters, all these variables we can control, right? We can grab a hold of them and we can make them constant. And that gives us a, a lot of predictive ability in terms of- my, because my head barely moves. Sure, yeah, I understand. So I only an hour a day, maybe two hours to the most. Yeah, I think um, when we when we imagine how we should start doing rehab, we of yes. course want to be rational about this, right? We don't want to go to five or six hours of therapy a day because, yeah, you you may be able to for, to do that one day, but what happens then is a it's not going to be that fun. Um, you may not have the capacity to do that, and, and you might be really tired. Yeah. Exactly, and so what that means is that the next seven days you don't do anything, and the consistency is the key. And so what the best thing to do is to start off with something like maybe 45 minutes or an hour a day, or even less in some instances, if you're not able to do that and then build up slowly. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I've seen so far after sure. using it a week, I can notice that my, the swelling in my hands went down a lot. Yep. And also I can see blood vessels come back in my fingers and my yep. hand. Yep. Whereas before, I think, it was just too swollen. Exactly. And I think, We've talked about this before. In the forearm, okay. I can feel the tendons getting soared. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is important, right? Because we all think about the plastic changes that are occurring in our brain. Mm -hmm. But there's also the mechanics of your limb, right? Um, I talked about this actually last time on the last Rhea Power Hour, where um, we were considering sort of the determinants of movement and what happens when, when we might have some pain. Um, and the kind of what can what can cause pain and inflammation, this sort of um, edema or swelling can be a big um, detractor for your movement. And so getting the quality of your tissues, getting that swelling down, getting those tissues moving again can be very, very important. And you might see reductions in your tone because of that as well. And that's where 
again, I use this term really kind of as a joke because it's kind of an inside PT joke, OT joke, but really true, true is, is motion is lotion for your joints and your muscles. And okay. so if you're able to move, then um, you're able to probably get all that return of the fluids and you might be able to get quicker results effectively.